The Emoji Movie looks like shit. I'm not kidding either, it looks like 100% pure grade A bullshit. Look, I'm usually an optimistic person, I prefer to see the glass half full rather than half empty, but I'm sorry, this movie looks terrible. The fact that Sony executives thought this was a good idea and nobody challenged them just proves to me that the whole thing smacks of cynicism and indifference. The Emoji Movie is just one of the many problems plaguing Sony Pictures Animation, and when you look into the films that were cancelled to make room for it, the situation becomes even more more tragic. SPA had a feature film adaptation of the classic cartoon character Popeye in the works, and had chosen none other than Jendi Tartakovsky to direct it. Jendi is best known for being the creator of Dexter's Laboratory and Samurai Jack. He also directed the two Hotel Transylvania films for SPA, and subsequently turned it into a blockbuster franchise for the studio, so when it comes to the world of animation, he's kind of a big deal. To gauge interest for the project, SPA released an animation test on their official YouTube page, and it was awesome. People went nuts over how good the footage looked. The colors popped, the designs were perfect, and the humor was spot on. It captured everything people loved about the old Popeye cartoons. It took the classic 2D designs and brought it into a modern CGI aesthetic, and with a little more development it could have been a great movie, but sadly it wasn't to be. After the fallout from the infamous 2014 hack, Sony made a number of changes to its executive ranks, which resulted in Christine Belson, who produced the crudes for DreamWorks Animation, being named the new president of SPA, and Tom Rothman replacing the ousted Amy Pascal as chairman of the Sony Motion Picture Group. Popeye didn't fit with the new direction Sony had for its animation division, and so it was cancelled in March 2015. The reason given was simple, it wasn't hip and trendy enough. Yes, an actual person said that about a classic cartoon character that's very much a product of his time. It's yet another example of a studio that knows nothing about the property it bought the rights to. Since Popeye's unfair demise, Jendi has been working on Season 5 of Samurai Jack, in addition to directing Hotel Transylvania 3 and a new short film called Puppy, which will debut this summer in front of <sighs> the Emoji Movie. As for his original project, can you imagine? Well, that's up in the air. I can only assume that it's either been put on hold or cancelled altogether. While we'll never see Popeye hit the big screen, we can always look back at that animation test and wonder what could have been. On June 5th, 2014, it was announced that Lauren Faust, the creator of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, would be directing a film called Medusa, which was based on the character that existed in Greek mythology. Unlike Popeye, no footage was ever released from the film, however, SPA released an artist profile on their official YouTube page detailing Faust's career. Near the end of the video, she discusses her thought process and her unique take on it. I moved on after that, and an opportunity kind of rose up. I got a call from Sony Pictures Animation. They pitched me Medusa, an idea that, you know, this monster that we all know, that everybody knows of, that's always been portrayed as this hideous beast, but who was she as a person and, and what kind of story could we tell if she was a protagonist? And I remember going, oh, that sounds cool. Oh, that sounds cool. <laughs> And as they were pitching it to me, I was like, oh my gosh, this is right up my alley. It's Greek mythology, it's magic, it's girl protagonist. These are all my favorite things. <laughs> like, I, I really want to do this. So we started talking and, and here I am. Unfortunately, in the end, Medusa suffered the same fate as Popeye. On November 24, 2015, Faust revealed she was no longer directing the film due to creative differences. The official statement she made to Cartoon Brew goes as followed, quote, I very much enjoyed my time at Sony Pictures Animation and was extremely excited about the progress our amazing team was making on Medusa. But as it happens at so many studios with so many projects, we ultimately ran into creative differences on the direction of the project. I do not know if Medusa has been shelved, but I am no longer working on it or at Sony, end quote. You passed on the creator of Dexter's Laboratory and Samurai Jack and the creator of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic just so you could make a goddamn movie about emojis. Let's play devil's advocate and look at the situation from an executive point of view. Popeye and Medusa, from a commercial standpoint, don't have very much appeal, whereas the emoji movie has tons of appeal, despite the fact nobody actually wants it. The reaction from the animation community proves it, and the like-to-dislike ratio reflects it. Let's not mince words here. Sony Pictures is in trouble. They've been consistently in fifth place among the six major studios in terms of box office revenue, they have a distinct lack of temporal franchises with Spider-Man and James Bond being the only exceptions, and they recently posted a $964 million loss. And with rumors of Sony wanting to sell off the film division once and for all, the pressure is on for the Emoji Movie to do well if Sony Pictures is to have a future within Sony. So to a certain extent, I can understand why Sony greenlit this film will cancel in Popeye and Medusa. Through the many emails of the Sony hack, it was revealed that they tried 
tried and ultimately failed to lure Phil Lord and Chris Miller, directors of the 2014 animated hit The Lego Movie, to run Sony Pictures Animation. Sony wanted to create a Pixar-style brain trust of filmmakers at SPA, which would have included Will Clock, Lindsay Doran, and Brad Bird. Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg, the masterminds behind the 2016 animated film Sausage Party, were also considered as potential members of the SPA brain trust. Unsurprisingly, Lord and Miller rejected the offer, stating that artists were treated like paper and that it was hard to do great work there. They highlighted these problems and many others to Hannah Minghella, who previously ran SPA. Staff morale plunged to an all-time low after the relocation of Sony Pictures Imageworks to Vancouver because of those sweet Canadian tax credits. The emails also show that former studio chiefs Michael Dinton and Amy Pascal had no idea what was going on at SPA and SPI, which allowed Bob Osher, who oversaw both as the head of Sony Pictures Digital Productions, to run it into the ground. To sum everything up, Sony Pictures Animation is plagued with poor management, horrible decision making, a lack of respect for artist and creative talent, and constant executive meddling. Does it surprise me that Sony alienated and pushed away Jendi Tartakovsky and Lauren Faust? No. Does it surprise me that Sony want to emulate Disney and Pixar without understanding what makes those studios great in the first place? No. And does it surprise me that Sony continues to ruin their animation division by putting out subpar films with the lame premises a four-year-old could write? No. If you're an animation director and you want to make an animated feature, the last place you want to go is Sony Pictures Animation. They have no respect for artist and creative talent and are clearly not interested in putting out quality films. All they want to do is put out lame, uninteresting garbage that only contributes to their reputation as a dumping ground for hot garbage. The Smurfs, The Star, Spider-Man, and Viva all sound very intriguing and have the potential to be great movies, but if the Emoji Movie fails to perform and Sony Pictures is sold off, I don't have very much confidence that the animation division will still be around, which means that all of those future projects might not even see the light of day. But the problem isn't just Sony Pictures Animation, it's the entire studio as a whole. In the next part, I'll be examining Sony's feelings on the live action side and ultimately come to the conclusion on why Sony Pictures is a beautiful disaster. So until next time, remember Remember to stay frosty and keep it weird.